Hey folks and welcome to Console Crew, your weekly roundup of everything PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo. I'm Lucy James and joining me as usual I've got Xbox expert Jordan Romay. Yo. And PlayStation Pro, Timo Hussein. Hello everyone, how are we today? It's good. I've yeah. called you into yeah. this meeting because no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> this is an intervention. <laughs> it's either an intervention or you're some kind of uh, you're some kind of inspector and you're making yeah. your final deduction. Yeah. Which is funny because I'm actually the one who is putting the question to you all and everyone at home who's watching. Because I was thinking about the year ahead and it's a weird one for games, man. It's so weird. So my question is, is 2021 going to be the weirdest year for AAA gaming ever? Okay, you could argue that 2020 was pretty weird, but we also had like some sem semblance of normality that was kind of like digital E3s, digital Gamescom, digital um, Game Awards. And in terms of releases, I think we had a pretty steady stream of AAAs, a few, a few delays here and there. And then we also had like console releases, which made, at least for me, made me feel like we had some normality because everyone was thinking about those and the releases that came alongside them. 2020 was relatively normal. However, 2021 is where we're really starting to see the effects of what 2020 had on the mm. world. And that's never been more evident when you look at the releases yeah, for the as, rest of the year. <laughs> as gamers, we're looking at ourselves in the mirror and our calendars and asking ourselves, what is there to live for? <laughs> what games? What games? Damn. Will, <laughs> what games are around and coming Keep away that upbeat. makes it? <laughs> Keep it upbeat. <laughs> But no, I mean, you're, you're right. Like, I don't know about you, but I weirdly plot out my year based on what games I think I'm going to be playing. And maybe it's just because, you know, this has been my life and my job for so long. It's like I think of summer, oh, it's E3 and then it's Gamescom and then it's this and then it's that. And then it's, you know, November, there'll be a COD and a Battlefield and this will probably come out here. And it's just very strange to look at the confirmed releases and just go, well, beyond May, nothing really has a release date. This is my mm -hmm. kind of year. This is my kind of year. Really? No triple A's in sight and just indies. Indies as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Everywhere the light touches, there will be an indie game. The thing is, like, we'll go through some of the games that we're kind of got our eyes on, but the indies aren't the kind of like they're not they're not the exception to the TBA rule where we don't know where they are and what they're where, where they're coming out. There's like we've got a whole list of indie games that we're excited for, but all of the release dates are to be announced. Yeah. <laughs> to be announced. Yeah, yeah. To, to it's be just announced. all like twenty twenty one at some point in time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's big, you know, like I hate to invoke Cyberpunk when it's ready. But you know, that's mm. what that's what everything is. And you know, so beyond May up until May, we've got things like Returnal, Near Replicant, um, Resident Evil Village, Deathloop, thank God, Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition, which is weirdly my most, it's not weirdly, but it is my most anticipated game of the year because I'm just, mm. just very, very excited to get back into it. And then after that, you know, you've got Kena, you've got Halo Infinite, apparently, and it's the 20th anniversary of Halo and Xbox, so they would be... It would be bad if they skipped that, but you know. If David Halo doesn't make it out this year, <laughs> doesn't come to the year party, we're gonna be very upset. But then, <clears throat> sorry, I'm I'm getting emotional because of all of the games that I don't. The know idea of there. not having David Halo this year. I've named him David it's Halo. Just too much. David That's Halo. Much. His name is John, but I've changed it to David. That's fine. I there has to that. be a Spartan out there whose name is David. Yeah. David Halo. Know. Yeah. But no, I mean, you know, you got Life is Strange, True Colors, um, Skyward Sword, Ghostwire Tokyo, a question mark, God of War Ragnarok, a question mark, Forbidden West, a question mark. I, I feel like God of War is a big old question mark, like, because they were aiming for the end of 2021, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I feel like that's just going to slide into early 2022 at this point. I mm. mean, uh, God of War 2018 came out on 420, a release date that I will never forget. Um, so I, I, you know, it's Blaze not it, like, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Blazing it up while playing God of War. <laughs> no, so I, I can, you know, totally see them taking that slot again. It's not like it did them any harm, but it's just, you know, we've got maybes, so many maybes. You've got like COD, Rumors of Battlefield. I put Overwatch 2 in this list because I hate myself. Crossfire no. X, Diablo 2 Remastered. And then you've got things like Dying Light 2. Who the hell knows what's happening with that? Far Cry 6 which is a very, very weird one. And then like Lego Skywalker Saga, which realistically should have come out 
when the rise of Skywalker came out. But I mean, so let's let's take all this into account. We've kind of like looked at the landscape for the next uh, few months and it's, does it feel weird to you guys that we don't really have those usual tent poles? I think, I think it's, I think it's weird in that even, even the things that we know will probably make it, we're starting to question. Like, there's a, I, I don't doubt that there will be a Call of Duty or a Battlefield this year. But we're still kind of like, will there though? And I think that's the kind of situation where we're in. We're in a state now where given the way of the world and things that have happened, the kind of cadence of releases that we're so used to and have been used to over the last few years and even generations has been kind of upended. And that is both an exciting thing and also a kind of terrifying thing because like you said, as people who we kind of live and die by a release calendar, um, or at least many of us as fans of the medium kind of like, we plot out how much energy to you know store up for get hype, getting hype based on release calendars. Um, that's it's kind of thrown us all into a bit of disarray at the same time it is exciting because you know people are rethinking the way they approach releases and like Jordan alluded to it's given so much breathing room to to indies like and I I have started like making a conscious effort to play indie games like I used to before AAA games one were so abundant two weren't games that you played for 20 hours and moved on from they became this is your life now and you have to play it and cover it and otherwise no one will you know care about anything you say and i feel like now i'm in a situation where i'm looking seek i seeking out games to play like i played devotion the other day and it was like i sat down and i was like yes Wow, I, I haven't sat down to play a game like Devotion in so long. And I remember loving doing this. So it is weird, but I think the important thing, like when you're scared and you're worried that no, there's no video game releases and you're a bit turned around, just remember there's loads of new video games out there. You just need to find them and give yourself the time to play them because it's good. But having said that, I am I am desperate for some, you know, meaty games to to get into you know i want some i want that cinema style experience it's one of those weird things that when you try to think about how like we approach video games so differently than the general public approaches video games like there are people out there who like their entire lives probably like revolve around oh i get the new call of duty and the new assassin's creed and that's pretty much all the major new games that i get every single year and so i'm very curious as like what is what are their plans for a year like this where so many of their probably usual tent poles aren't they're like we're we're building content around games like outriders returnal kana like games that we probably would have covered anyway regardless of what have happened but will people turn to games like this that are a little bit bigger than indies but smaller than your traditional triple a in a year where it's just kind of bare of the usual tentpole titles. I honestly think that we've sort of covered this in a roundabout way before, but when we've been talking about Game Pass, I think this is gonna be the year where people just think, okay, well, nothing's coming out. I've got this service, I'll just dip in. And I think there's gonna be this big resurgence of older games, which is, you know, really unfortunate that at the same time, you've got Sony out here being like, no old games for you, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Access denied, cut off. And so I, t I honestly, like, it's not even just those people who, you know, people like us who actively look forward to the all the next huge big releases and, you know, like keep up to date with everything. I don't know what's gonna happen to the people who, like you say, just get the big annualized franchises. But then there's also this big looming question about how development is gonna go forward um, after this, because obviously we're, everyone's still feeling the effects of the, quarantines, the shutdowns, um, but not even that, you know, you've got part shortages, um, production issues, and then it's like, what is life gonna be like in hopefully a COVID free world, you know? Are developers gonna be going back into the studio and being able to create things the way they used to, which is probably, you know, obviously there's been an adjustment period as everyone's got used to working from home, but also, are people going to want to do that anymore? Studios going to want to, you know, pay for all that real estate if, you know, now that the kinks have been worked through, everyone could just do it from home. And so it's 2021 is this weird year where everyone's like semi trying to get back to the way things were before, 
but also have to re realize that it's an entirely new world. Mm, yeah, and yeah, the you know people have made big life decisions based on the things that have happened the last year, where you're living in a city where it's expensive, and that city you might have moved to because it's a it's a hub for video game development, right? Like it's there's certain cities in the world, San Francisco being one of them, like various cities in Canada and parts of London as well, where people go there because they know there's a, a concentration of jobs for game development. But then in a pandemic where everyone's working from home, you're like, well, I don't need to be here. I can make the game that I'm working on from somewhere else. And like the idea of now being like, everything's back, come and move back to this expensive city where you've shown that you can still do your job outside of being here. Um, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be tricky. And I feel like this is, people might be watching this thinking about why Why is this important to the, the games? But like the, the reason it's important is because this is, has a very high chance of forever changing the way that games are made. And, and that has a knock on impact on how releases work because people are going to want to take more time when they're working uh, from home and, you know, not immediately concentrated in one studio. And that means that, you know, maybe development cycles become a little more protracted, but then you have to think about what's the pushback from publishers who have these kind of like tentpole release dates staked in the ground and build their kind of stock and their entire marketing cycles around it. And it's going to be interesting and it's really fascinating to see how it unfolds. But yeah, in, in the short term, it's just going to be a bit confusing for a lot of people. Well, as well, you don't know, I mean, God knows what's going to happen this year. There are rumors of <laughs> online E3s, people talking about what's going to happen with Gamescom. PAX, uh, PAX East has been canceled, but the rest of them are still on for like the end of the year. Which is so Goth, weird. Comic-Con. Comic-Con, Thanksgiving oh, weekend. Comic -Con. Why? Why would you what think that's a good that? idea? Yeah, if you if you are <laughs> if you are involved in scheduling Comic-Con, I, Tamar Hussein, not uh, not as a representative of Game, GameSpot, just me, <laughs> would like you to... We're probably going to have to... <laughs> yeah. Probably going to have to cut that. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and thank you for your time. Yeah, but so I don't know about you, but I can't see myself going back to a Gamescom convention hall this year. I don't, I genuinely don't think my nerves could handle being around that many people after spending over a year in shutdown, um, seeing only like three people. Um, but you know, those are the big tentpole events that developers would have to work towards. You know, you'd have a build that you could show off at E3 that people could play on the show floor at PAX. And so, you know, you can't underestimate what losing those is gonna be like, you know. How many people go to Gamescom? Like 400,000? Something too, too many. ridiculous <laughs> like saying. that. And so, you know. Based on the pictures, it looks like way too many people go <laughs> to Gamescom many. every year. <laughs> it's too many. And so it's gonna it's gonna be very strange because as well, like you if if you don't have those events, you are then vying for space at like a PlayStation digital event or an Xbox digital event or a Nintendo one. And it's like, that's not the same as someone going hands on with your game for 15 minutes compared, you know, compared to, oh, here's a minute long trailer packed in alongside a bunch of other minute long trailers. So it's gonna be a weird one. And that's why I think 2021, like all of those points that we just talked about, it's just such a strange year. I, I mean, I know everyone's thinking like, oh, we're through 2020, the vaccine's on the way, stuff's opening up, things are going to go back to normal. I just really don't think that's going to happen. I think our lives have been completely yeah. changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just in the same way that the industry is going to be like irre irrevo irrevocably changed. Jeez. You see, I was thinking of that word and I was like, I'm just not going to try and say it. Oh, irrevocably. 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 Uh, changed like uh, I think human interaction has to be factored into that mm -hmm. like like you said like well, where sometimes I see people out on the road and I wonder if I could ever like shake their hand again and chances are probably not like I'm like I don't know. yeah but like um, even based on that like there's so much that like the general public doesn't really see at something like GDC or E3 that goes into advertising a game like there's so many times that like a developer will pull someone aside like or a publisher or a journalist and be like hey there's this thing that we're working on that we can't really talk about yet like and so we're just going to talk to you kind of face to face so that there's no 
paper trail. There's the fact that like there are so many games that I would not have been interested at all just watching the trailer, but actually getting hands on with it. I was like, yeah. oh, this game is yeah, yeah. dope. It's like the, the word of mouth stuff, too. It's yeah. like, you know, oh, you have to go go now. There's this thing on the show floor. It's right at the yeah. back. No one Check else is really out. talking about it, but it's my game of the show. And, you know, you're going to have mm. those moments. So all that being said, what are the things that you are looking forward to in 2021? Jordan, I'll come to you first. Well, in a perfect world, they would have confirmed that Hollow Knight Silk Song is already coming out this year, and I would say that. Should have expected but... that. But... Because apparently Team Cherry hates me specifically. Uh, yeah, they've told me. Uh, they've told me that <laughs> yeah. as long as you keep talking about Hollow Knight Silk Song, they're just not gonna do. Oh, that explains a lot. That explains so much. Probably Chris Tales, which is tentatively scheduled for July. It's that uh, RPG where the main character can see the past, the present, and the future, like all at the same time. It has this like really awesome style, turn-based combat. Everything that I just love about RPGs and I I want to play that game so badly. It's been delayed, I want to say, two or three times now and they've finally been like, okay, July 2021, this is it. I'm like, okay, please I'll don't delay. I have, no I have nothing coming out like right now in summer. Please give me something to do once I'm done with Mass Effect for the third time. Tam, what about you? Oh, Elden Ring, where are you? <laughs> I like how we've led this first with the games uh, that are like, this is what we uh, wish that we could be excited for in 2021. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking it, because like, I was like, oh, okay, Elden Ring's not probably not going to make it. Thankfully, I have Gotham Knights. And then Gotham Knights got delayed, and I was like, why? Why do you hate me? But I think the game I'm probably most excited about is going to be um, like a Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Is It's going to be a big one, but also... Deathloop is out there as well. Those are the two that I'm kind of like, oh hell yeah, those those are those are enough for me to stick around. Oh yeah, uh, I think I, th I think for me definitely Deathloop and Mass Effect. But honestly, I'm very excited for Twelve Minutes as mm -hmm. well. I think that just looks super super cool. And honestly, I'm I'm kind of enjoying just seeing things pop up that I have missed. So what's that game on Switch? Uh, Grim Noir. Oh yeah, no, the noir game. That's uh, Genesis Noir. Genesis, Genesis Noir. noir. Yeah, yeah. noir. Genesis noir. noir. People are talking about a lot, so I've downloaded that. Um, and just yeah, things that are things that are popping up. I'm I'm kind of enjoying going game to game like that. But mm. yeah, of course, uh, as everyone is probably very very eager to play as well. Gran Turismo Seven. That's 2022, mate. You hate to see it. Got delayed. <laughs> And with that, let us know what you're looking forward to in 2021 and beyond. And, you know, let's just keep fingers crossed that God of War doesn't slip. I really hope to play that this year. It's going to no, happen. I don't know no, it's going to happen. It's no absolutely going to slip. Don't. There's if no God way War, it comes out this year. If God of War comes out this year, I will kiss Corey Barlog on the mouth. I hope you're both vaccinated at that point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.